Hey, my lovely Willow Vibes tribe members. I am Jessica from Willow Vines Intuitive Vibes, and I'm here to do a collective message. Today is Monday, April 17th, 2023. If you care to know the date, please like, 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 comment, share, and subscribe. Stick around. Hope you do stay. I'd love it if you would. Um, yeah, so anyways, I have a few things I want to say, and they, I feel like it's going to tie into this energy or just help open someone's eyes whatever that is so maybe you're trying to open someone else's eyes like to see things from your perspective no matter what that is because for some reason i'm sitting here and i'm going mm, like hello <laughs> phone <laughs> hello and i don't know why i did that <laughs> so there could be some significance with someone's phone i keep saying that and it i don't know if it has to do with watching a phone because Sometimes when I get in other people's energies, I'll act like them and I'll sit there and be like hold, holding a phone a different way like I'm sitting there watching something or whatever. So someone just might look at their phone a lot. But I mean, some of you might be watching me on there, but this feels like something else. I don't know. There's a significance with the phone and now my chest call someone needs to call a phone call so a phone call could be significant yeah because if you think about it like a phone ringing like in cartoons and stuff is like it'll jiggle so ring 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 call a phone call there's something significant significant about a phone call someone might want to reach out and talk to you or there's already been a phone call it's kind of both but i feel like someone wants to speak to another person so anyways <coughs> <coughs> Oh, let's just, oh, let's just breathe. So someone might be a little nervous about making this phone call, whatever, to whoever it is or whatever it's about, but there is some significance with it for some reason. Salt and pepper. Hmm. Whatever that means to you. They used to be, uh, my daughter's like initial rats, their names before they had babies, but could be food salt and pepper or someone's got salt and pepper hair whatever that means to you because it could be anything I'm not going to decipher it but um so anyways in my last reading when I was out in the garage it was kind of like a little chill chit chat thing I I said something like when the broom falls and I mean it's companies coming spiritually or you know or otherwise but usually it's in a spiritual sense well, I walked out in the garage this morning and the broom's on the, on the ground. It fell or got knocked over or whatever. And I'm like, I just fucking said that. Like why? Cause it's never on the ground like that. So either someone put it there or the dogs knocked it over, whatever. However it happened, <coughs> the point is, is I saw it. So whether someone did it intentionally or just kind of happened, that's how we see things sometimes, you know, but it's very likely that the dogs did it because I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, Griffin almost took my ass out the other night. I was standing there and I had my hands full and I didn't realize in time that his run, dog run, was wrapped around my, my feet, my ankles. And I didn't have enough time to react to step out of the little loop and he took off running. And I so I just braced myself so I wouldn't fall. Oh my God, he burned my legs so bad. Like... It's like wire burns around my ankles and it stings like a mofo. It hurts so bad. I was like, mother of crap. And Emma looked at me and she goes, you look like Sally from the nightmare before Christmas, you know, like, cause her appendages are sewn on. And I was like, yeah, it does. Looks like I, I chopped my feet off or someone tried to or something. But anyways, um, yeah, that hurt. But what's weird about it is I was drawn to rewatch some readings yesterday from before, which I've been doing on and off lately. If it tickles my fancy or if I'm drawn to it, I'll watch it. And a lot of the readings that I've done, I'm like, holy crap, holy crap. It's literally happening the day I'm watching it. And I said it a year ago or so, or things have are have come to fruition since I've said them and I'm like oh my goodness so it's kind of cool to want to look back on stuff like that maybe some of you are doing that or you need to do that just so for confirmation purposes for yourself with different um <coughs> with different readers not just with me 
or just going over history for yourself in general. Um, but yeah, what was weird about that is I was re-watching one and I was getting, it's when I was picking up on pains, different pains, like, oh, my hand, oh, my ankle, my ankle stings, or I got a sting in the back or whatever. Well, that's how, what the pain feels like on my ankles from what happened with the dog. It stings. It doesn't burn or anything like that. It stings. It feels like a bee sting. Just a really big one. <laughs> it hurts like a bitch. But I picked up on that stuff prior would have had no clue because I didn't even have that dog at the time you know but anyways it's just kind of funny how that stuff comes together there was something else I was gonna say but for some reason it's just evading me at this time so it must not be important but anyways I hope you guys are having a wonderful day it's been so nice outside here but it's kind of rainy and crappy today but we need the rain so Anyways, it actually feels nice. It's nice and cool. Not in my room. It's hot as balls in here for some reason. But anyways, we have a union. <sighs> Made me want to say union soldier. I don't know why. But anyways, we have union. And that has to do with commitments coming together. So there could be a commitment that's being tested right now. Whether you're with this person or, or not. Somebody might be approaching you. Renew, a renewed sense of love um, or new love for some of you. And then we have struggling to overcome self-imposed limiting beliefs and the bench. A bench could be significant. You might sit down together with somebody um, at a park or something like that or someone goes to a place oh, or somebody goes to a place where there's a bench. Because I, Every time I look at this, at least right now, when, since it came out, I'm picturing a bench by water. So I don't know if it's a lake, a river, a pond, or whatever, but I'm picturing a bench that like overlooks the water. I've got two different, it's like two different spots in my head, but they're both around water. So some of you could have already sat on a bench just contemplating life in this situation or relationship, or that's what somebody does. They just they kind of sit on the bench and chill and think. Because I don't feel like I'm sitting here talking to anyone unless I'm talking to spirit, you know, like you're sitting by yourself going, I really miss you. I could use some advice or you know what I mean? Um, when you're talking to your higher power or someone who's crossed over, but you're, you're physically sitting there by yourself because there's only two footprints here. You're not alone when you're sitting there on the bench talking, thinking, even if you're just even if you're not saying it out loud, I hear you. Someone sits on a bench and talks to somebody on the other side. You just heard I talk to you too. I talk to you too. Okay, there could be like telepathic communication here between you and someone, but this also feels like I keep wanting to be like, you know, dad. <sighs> Am I making the right choice here? So should I do this? Should I do that? You know, whatever. Like, how do I, how do I fix this situation? How do I move forward? Cause this feels like I need advice and I wish I could sit here and talk to you and, and get advice from you. Like, what would you do if you were in my shoes or, you know what I mean? What would you do about this situation? What would you do about this past relationship? What would you do about this current person that's on my mind? Whatever you know, about life in general. It's hard to talk to something that isn't there. Maybe someone's feeling that way because that's what it's making me think of with struggling to overcome self-imposed limiting beliefs. Like, I don't want to look like a crazy person sitting here talking to myself kind of thing. Or, you know, do I really believe this? I do believe it, but I don't know. It's almost like I want solid evidence. I want to see with my own friggin' eyes. Which reminds me too, because <coughs> whoever this is has seen, has had spiritual encounters with their own eyes. They might be skeptical and try to like write it off as something else. Whoever this is, that's why, I don't know, it's hard for them to wrap their head around, but I feel like they're getting there because it's almost like, how do you explain, how do you explain all of this? Um, like 
all these little things add up, you know what I mean? It's something like that, either when it pertains to you and what you're doing or in their own life, your own life, whatever. Um, because what it's making me think of, this is what I was going to say that I that flew out of my head because it's all about timing. Um, because I didn't know this message was going to go this way. I never know what's going to come out of my mouth when I'm doing a reading, I really don't. But, anyways, um, I was sitting down at the table with the kids, um, with my daughter and her boyfriend, and we were talking about paranormal activity and spirits and stuff, which he's been watching a lot of shows about that recently. Like I, he was into it before, but because of what I do, he's like really interested. Like, hmm. Cause when he first found out that I read tarot and I'm a medium and whatever, he was kind of like, okay, you know, like, yeah, right. Um, which a lot of people feel that way when I tell them that stuff until some, till an experience happens or until I say something that they go, what? Um, then it makes me laugh. But anyways, <laughs> cause if you're supposed to know, you will like, I don't know, spirit proves themselves. I don't have to prove myself. If that makes sense, I'm feeling nervous now, but, <clears throat> but anyways, uh, we're sitting out there and we were talk because we were talking about one of his friends who had passed because I had picked up on that and he thinks about that a lot because I didn't know that he had a friend that passed away. I mean, this kid's young, you know. He's he's not a well, he legally is an adult. He's nineteen, but he's young, you know. So it's like I wasn't, I don't know. I didn't know anything about his life. He had told me about, I think he had told me about a grandmother, his nan or nana or something, and nan. I thought was I said that in the window one day before I even met the kid. Huh. Anyways, regardless of that, um, he told me about her, but that was that was it because we hadn't really, him and I hadn't really had a one on one. You know what I mean? Like not about stuff like that. And I just we were down in the basement one night, which is where a lot of activity happens when I when I sit down and talk to people sometimes. Like this happened between me and someone else I know. When the lights flashed over his, oh, well, it was actually over my shoulder um, in the basement, but he saw it when his when his father came through and was like, you know, I'm here. And I, what I was saying, it was being confirmed with the flashing of the light bulb in the ceiling for him, whether he believed it or not. And <laughs> I've told this story a bunch of times. Well, it didn't flash in the basement for my daughter's boyfriend, but I brought up, um, a friend that had passed away. The letter S was significant. I said, which that's what his name begins with. And, um, I knew it was an accident and he died young. I just didn't know what kind of accident. Well, he got crushed by a vehicle, a vehicle significant. Um, it crushed his head, which with headaches and stuff. Oh my gosh. That's what that was in that reading. I just watched too from that I said like over a year ago where I was like, grab my head, like, ah, my head. Hmm. Anyways, we're go <laughs> I'm connecting some crap with that because I was like, I don't know what that is. But anyways, he had come through and I was like, he's around you and, and whatnot. And, you know, he kind of was like, oh, cool. And like laughed it off. And then, um, but he thinks about it all the time. So we're talking about it again the other night. And he goes, you know, that really blew my mind. Like, how would you know that? Like, you didn't even know that he was my friend. And like, and it really was, he was just kind of like, what? So he wanted me to use the pendulum and stuff. So I was doing that and I was like, it's not your friend that's here, it's Joe. Because <laughs> we were literally at that table that used to be his and I knew it was him. And I was like, um, my daughter had a feeling it was him too. But it was weird because we were... He had me draw a, an insane clown, which is ICP, and he has that drawing, that artwork. I have his artwork where he actually drew that clown and stuff because I was I totally forgot about that crap, and I've never really listened to ICP, but my daughter was dancing to some of the music because we decided to put it on when we were doing that. But anyways, as I'm using the pendulum, I asked a question. I'm like, oh, I was like, oh, it's Joe, and then the light flickered, and my daughter's boyfriend was like, okay, you can't deny that. We've been out there here this whole time. We come out here all the time. That never happens. And I come out here with you. We're doing this. And it does it. And I was like, hmm, I told you. He was talking to me again about it last night, sitting on the couch in the dark, like, that was so cool. 
<laughs> I just think it's funny. <clears throat> but anyways, yeah, there's a lot of activity around me a lot, but it's not scary activity. So if anyone gets, a, gets scared, um, don't be, don't be. Because there's differing beliefs here. Someone could just come from a completely different background. Um, I see everything you're doing. I, I see you. I'm watching over you. That's what this feels like. There's someone on the other side, multiple someones for a lot of different people. But whatever significant with this, the significance with this bench is they see you. Spirits, they, they hear what you're saying. They're watching over you. They, they know what you're doing. Um, so just be honest with yourself and with them because they already know when you're bullshitting them. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know why I wanted to say that. Spirit knows. I just know. There's also something significant to do with wood. I don't know if it has to do with the woods, like tree lines and stuff, or if it's like chopped wood, wood, like burning wood, something. Whatever that means to you. Aloha healing. Yeah, there's a lot of healing energy in here. I feel like spirits just trying to help. They're not trying to hurt. They're not trying to scare anyone. They're just trying to help you along your path. And there is someone who's seeking guidance because they're going through some stuff. And spirit is there helping you even if you don't understand, even if you think you don't know, you don't feel it, whatever. There's going to be little changes going on for you where you'll go, well, that seemed like a little mini miracle or I can't believe that just happened. Like I must be on a lucky streak. You know what I mean? But that's when spirit puts things in our path or leads us towards those little treasures. Why is it making me think of pennies now? Because Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln, that's on a penny. But, um, my son, ow, has showed me something about how, um, some people don't realize that they have treasures and stuff. Because there's certain coins that are worth a lot of money to collectors and whatever because they're extremely rare. And usually it's the ones that are fucked up <laughs> that are worth the most. <laughs> Which, okay, there's this is going to be some type of like analogy or whatever. Because if you think about it, like from a, if you're viewing it as though it's from another person, the people who have been through the most... Um, and overcame those struggles and you know they're they're not damaged goods they're just they, they've been through so much that you know maybe they were held back in life or they held themselves back because because of whatever they've gone through and then they slowly overcome that stuff that that's what makes strong men and women and amazing people that's what that's where true fighters come from you know what I mean and someone like that is worth so much more than I don't know, they, I don't want to say, I don't want to compare people because we're all valuable, but it's like, they'd be worth your time to be with someone like that because they're well seasoned and more experienced, even if there's like a few, a few flaws in there, you know what I'm saying? Because like the pen, I don't remember what the fuck it's called, but there's one of the pennies, it's got the little oat looking things. <laughs> the wheat pennies there we go those um it was like a it was double printed so it it was like printed twice like the date and in, in god we trust <clears throat> just one of those is worth like 20 grand and i was like holy shit but my son had showed me that a while ago and i came across the video just recently and was reminded of it and i'm because i always talk about picking up the pennies and stuff like that you know it's almost like there's some type of miracle or really good thing that's going to come someone's way and it's unexpected like it wouldn't it be totally unexpected this hasn't happened to me not yet but that'd be cool if it did but anyways um where you know you find a penny and you're the type of person that you're like I'm not bending over for that it's not worth my time it's just a stupid dirty penny you know what I mean like I'm just gonna keep walking by like everybody else does and then you got people like me because I'm not the only one that does this that goes, oh, a penny, and I pick it up immediately, put it in my pocket, and whatever. And I don't spend those ones usually. I'll save them and look them over because I always, I always check the the year. I always check the date, and I didn't know why because I haven't. There's no significance to that. Well, maybe coin collecting. I don't know. But anyways, so it, I would be more apt to 
find a treasure like that versus somebody else who just walks by because I'm taking the chance. I'm going, oh, I'm going to do this. Like it takes two seconds, but I'm going to say this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to whatever. So taking that little risk can pay off in dividends is what I'm getting at. Not just with pennies, but you know, in life in general. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Yes, it does. Just, you know, do you boo. <laughs> I don't know why I wanted to say that. Um, there could be a pause in this situation between you and another person. Someone could be taking a break or just on hiatus, not speaking or whatever, because they are working on themselves. They're healing. Um, I feel like I'm kind of pulling away from people energy. Maybe you're doing that just so that you can have time to be just by yourself. Um, I feel like it has to do with overcoming the past and self, self-worth. Um, something to do with an elf too. It's making me think of Elf on the Shelf, but that's the first aid card in the deck that I made. Yeah, it's healing energy. Um, you are worth, you're worth it. You're worth this connection. You're worth this friendship. You're worth life. You're worth a lot of things. You're worth way more than, than what people might think. A lot of people might look at you as though you're that fucking penny, but you're that... The wheat penny that's double minted. That's what it's called. Because it's minted in whatever. what Like there was, that's where the fuck up was. Was when it was minted. But it's, it's a lovely mess. It's a lovely screw up. I don't know. So maybe somebody screwed up. And um, it's going to turn out to be something really great. You know. Like it's. A, this seemed like a really big mistake. But this is a good one. I don't know. Something like that soulmate compatibility companionship your best life partner i'm telling you someone wants to heal a connection with you if we can have soulmates that aren't like lovers and stuff that's not romantically speaking because you can have a child of yours can be a soulmate family friends whatever um someone didn't believe in spiritual connections that you could truly be connected to another person um, on a soul level, they're struggling with that, but I feel like they might be seeing that that's true. It's almost like I never believed in this hubba bubba bullshit before, but I, I do now. Like, I don't know. I can't, I can't look away. Like I'm seeing something and I can't really wrap my head around it. I want more clarity and I, I need answers, but I'm leaning more towards, um, I think this is fucking true. I'm leaning more towards this is true. That's what this feels like. So, so someone's skepticism is kind of floating away just because of, I don't know, whatever you're saying or doing or whatever's happening to them is being backed up by fact, I guess you could say. Um, <clears throat> something to do with Dove and chocolates and stuff. Candy. Something to do with candy. Eating candy, chocolate. I don't know. I mean, we just had Easter and stuff, but... Hmm. Ice cream's popping in my head, too. Maybe someone's hungry. Or they got cravings or something. Because... I mean, that could be, like, pregnancy cravings, but we all get cravings from time to time. Just saying. Hmm. Alright, so, let's see. I want... With this soulmate thing, I want to kind of see what's on this person's mind when it pertains to the soulmate energy. This really could be with a friend of yours. Someone's preparing to cross that bridge. They might have looked at it and was a little, um, a little afraid because it could have looked dilapidated. It's reminded me of that dream where I was in, because yeah, this is spiritual and stuff. When I was in the cemetery, I'm not going to go over the whole thing. And like there was a cemetery at night. And there's like a main road and then another road, like a cul-de-sac. I don't know. It's got a bunch of houses and crap, a back road, I guess. But that's where the cemetery was. And in the dream, there was this white bridge and it said, path to pure happiness. And it was all pretty. And I'm like, ooh, fuck yeah. So I walked right across the bridge. No problems. <laughs> I was like, I want pure happiness. And I get to the other side and it's just houses. There's no one. I couldn't get into any of them. There was no one around. I was out there by myself and I'm just like. I'm all alone. 
how the hell is this pure happiness? Because it wasn't very happy on the other side of the fucking bridge in the dream. I'm, I was confused. I was like, so it was almost like this seemed like it was going to be something and I'm the only one over here. So you could have been ahead of the game. As I did mention, not on here, but before I hit record, how time is going by so fast. We're already almost through the month of April and this year just started. It's like, it's like you better pick up the pace because time's just going to be going doo -doo 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 really fast. But um, anyway, so there was that dream and then it kind of, I don't remember what happened in between, but I was by myself and then I circled back and the bridge was still there in the same cemetery, but it was all dilapidated and fallen apart. And the sign still said, you know, past to pure happiness. And I was like, but I felt like I was somebody else crossing the bridge. So it's almost like one person crosses it when everything's all great. And the other person is like, shit, I didn't realize how wonderful this was until everything started falling apart. You know what I mean? So someone's going, oh, fuck, if I cross this bridge, I'm going to fall through. But guess what? It wasn't over water. It was over the ground, the grass, over a cemetery. It's, it's almost like the dead will help you. Like, you're not going to fall. And even if you do fall through, you're not going to get hurt. You'll be on solid ground. That's what that felt. That's what that feels like in this. Like, someone's thinking about that. Like, why am I so afraid to do this? Why am I so afraid to say something to whatever? I'm trying to find my place in the world and I need my space. So that this person's definitely in contemplation mode. They're heavily thinking. They got a lot on their mind. They're working on themselves and healing or that's you. So like if someone's pulled away from you and you're like, why aren't they talking? Do they not care? It's not that they don't care. It's that they're trying to figure themselves out, their situation out, this situation, whatever, you know, um, they are drawn to you. They do want to talk to you. I just heard more than you know. Like, I really, really want to talk to you. But they're trying to figure out what to say, how to say it, when when to have this interaction. You know, do you even want to talk to them? Shit like that. They're trying to overcome a lot. They're trying to clear their space. Yeah, well, we have a new beginning here. With the Ace of Poles, Ace of Wands. Hmm, what the hell is that? Makes me think of a receipt. I don't know if someone's saving their receipts or if someone's gonna buy someone something. I wanna pay I'm gonna pay for this new opportunity. That's what that feels like because you get a receipt after you pay for something. I have receipts. I have receipts for everything. Someone has receipts for everything. I just want to say they have receipts for... Oh, you know what this is making me think of? It's making me think of like some type of family discord. So like say there's, you know, you have a kid with someone or children, whatever. And the other parent is being kind of shitty like if you move forward if you do this if you do that you know I'm gonna keep your kid from you kind of thing um and and say that you never paid or you never did this or you never did that or that you're a shit bag or I don't know someone's just not nice because that's what it's making me think of and this is small so but this person that's being targeted in that in that way is like I have receipts for everything everything I've paid for I just heard I took your advice but anyways, everything I've paid for that pertains to you, my child, my children, whatever, I have receipts. You can't fucking do that to me. Someone, I just, someone's a lot smarter than they look. Um, I don't know. I feel like why am I? I feel like I'm chewing something up. Isn't that what, um, like, corn on the cob? <laughs> Why am I doing that? <coughs> Figuring things out, little squirrels, because they eat the little corn things. I don't know. Um, maybe someone needs bird seed. Someone, 
I don't know. Someone saved their receipts so that someone else can't screw them over. But there's an opportunity here to move forward. Um, so that's good if, some, if you're doing that. Because it's almost like you think that you can pull a fast one on me. Go F yourself. I've got proof of everything um, that's gone on and that I've done. So you want to bring me to court? Let's go. Like that's kind of what that feels like for someone. Um, Cause they could be dealing with someone who's not that great just saying but anyways i'm so caught on that piece of paper i'm so like hung up on that piece of paper there's a significance with a piece of paper i don't know if it's a letter if someone wrote you something if it's something you wrote down there's something to do with a piece of paper that's significant um i'm so hung up on that stupid piece of paper that have to do with marriage even? I don't think so. I don't think it has anything to do with marriage. It's literally a piece of paper. Whatever. I don't know. I'm not, like nothing's popping in my head with it. So whatever that means to you. And coal. Uh, lumps of coal. Charcoal. That could even be somebody's name. But coal. That's making me think of like when the embers are burning. You know what I mean? Because coal has to get really hot to stay ignited. Because if you think about it, like with the the smoke with a smoker, um, like a grill smoker thing. Um, I just learned how to do this. Cause I mean, I under I had I knew the concept, but I didn't know how to like light the fucking thing. But anyways, without using um, an ig ign igniter or uh, fuel, without using fuel, you know, <laughs> gas and crap, you know, because you don't want your food to taste like that. That'd be gross. But anyways, um, you have to layer it with like, you've got your, your charcoal, your paper and whatever, and you, you light it. And so that the flames basically so there's a lot of flames it's a lot of passion especially if we're talking about a connection because that's what's making me think of with coal and in your furnace too back when they used to have the coal wood burners whatever i don't know what the hell they're called i don't really care so, <laughs> so anyways you get to just to what i'm fucking trying to say here um <coughs> anyways you get the fire going really high really hot and that way the coals they concentrate most of the heat because the, f the flames are going to die down because whenever there's a big fire, it never really lasts. I mean, think about a campfire for, for crying out loud. If you start it with paper and cardboard, yeah, it's going to go or a dried out Christmas tree. Those will take off pretty good. But anyways, it'll be like, woo, a big fire. And then the second, you know, the cardboard's burnt up because it goes like that or like the temporary shit goes, the fire, the flames just go. So it's like having passion intense passion for maybe multiple people or a temporary situation or someone could have looked at you or the situation as though it was temporary because there was a lot of passion because the flames were just like a mile fucking high and it's like yeah when shit gets that hot it just it goes out just as quick but this person or you or someone didn't bank on the fact that there was coals underneath there there's charcoal that the shit's still burning the hottest part of the fire is internal it's it's what you can't see it's beyond the surface. And that's actually what, you know, that's what you use in the smoker to cook meat and stuff to you just regulate the temperature. But it's the same thing with, with any fire, no matter where it is. You know, like in a campfire, you think you put the, you think you put the fire out because you put water on it or whatever. And then when the sun goes down or you walk away, even the next day you look and go, oh, there's still red in there, still, still burning. I thought I put that out. So something could still be ignited between you and another person, even though on the surface you feel like it isn't. I guess I said all of that just to say that. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> I go round and round and round with what I want to say, and then it's like the simplest explanation. But anyways, maybe somebody talks like that, and not just me. <laughs> but anyways... Um, something to do with education. Someone could be in school or they're learning about something as well. We have the Ten of Cups, the Ten of Pots. 
yeah, there's a beautiful new opportunity here. Someone's seeing the beauty within whatever the situation is between you and them. Like, you make them happy. They see that you're happy. They want to be happy like that. What the fuck is it? Oh, that's in Runaway Train, too. Like, help me... What is it? Help me learn how to smile again? Yeah, something like, can you show me how to smile again? So you could be showing somebody how to live in the moment, how to be happy within themselves so it's not like they're taking your happiness and they need you to be happy it's it's like lessons education yeah <laughs> somebody's learning how to be happy in within within them within their own situation within themselves no matter what their circumstances are no matter what's going on no matter what shitty person is saying whatever no matter people take everything from you you know what i mean someone seeing that they don't have to I don't know, they're changing their perspective. They don't have to live in misery, basically. Someone might have a mood disorder as well, and they could have been a little stubborn and didn't want to get medication or seek um, some type of medical attention for it. You know, like go to their doctor and be like, hey, I'm feeling kind of kind of sad today, you know. Uh, maybe some medication will help because that stuff can be temporary to get us over a hump and then maybe we don't need it down the line. Some people need it for the rest of their lives, but there's nothing wrong with therapy or medication if it helps you. And you don't even have to tell anyone if you don't want to, but don't be ashamed of needing an extra boost, of needing something to make you be happier in life. You know what I mean? Sometimes we literally have a chemical imbalance and there's not a gosh darn thing anyone can do to change it. Lincoln. That's why Lincoln keeps popping up too. One of the reasons Abraham Lincoln was a profound man. Okay. You know, he was the 16th president of the United States. He abolished slavery. He was a go getter. He didn't come from shit. He came, I think, wasn't his father like a lumberjack and stuff like that? Like a woodsman or whatever. Like he didn't come from wealth. He basically made his life what he wanted it to be and he didn't set out to be a president I do believe he was a lawyer at one point like he went to school to become a lawyer and then that's kind of it was during the elections or something like that and he ended up getting elected and that's kind of how that went down in the ran around about way um but anyways so it's almost like his life changed course and he didn't even realize why well, while it was happening. Like, I didn't set out for this. I didn't set out to be this amazing man, <laughs> this amazing woman, whatever. It just, it, it was faded. It's like I was led down this path and it went from this, you know, doing this. This was my focus to, okay, now I'm going to do this. And, and, and it was because he made a lot of pivotal changes throughout the nation in this country for a lot of people like a lot of the changes and that we see today you know the way that we live life would be so different if he if, if none of that should happen I'm just saying that might be where union soldiers were coming into like that that energy but um but anyways like he didn't set out to be the president he didn't set out to change the fucking world he just was doing what was right what he felt was right at the at any given time you know what I mean because when he was a kid he wasn't like oh I'm gonna be the president you know what I mean and he didn't come from money but then he ended up having money through you know the career path that he chose and the life that he led and whatever but he also experienced a lot of trauma a lot of pain um because I feel like I want to cry right now like a lot of loss you know he lost damn near all his kids and stuff and his wife struggled too like they didn't their life was not easy but it's but it's almost like the pain and trauma and bullshit that he went through he didn't want anyone else to feel he wanted to make the world a better place I'm gonna cry um for his children for the future because this was so much more important than what he was going through it's like, my problems are my new and they're my own, you know? But I don't want to, the things that, I want to change the things that we can fucking change. That's what it was with him. 
that's why Lincoln's so pivotal because there's someone who deals with depression and you know throughout history he was known to deal with depression they didn't have medication and shit like that back then but he took that that pain that sadness and used it as a driving force to achieve things that only he could achieve at that time especially that's why he's like an idol of mine but it's not I wouldn't really say an idol but he's a profound man I've always been drawn to him ever since I was a kid. I was in third grade, did a book report on Abraham Lincoln, didn't understand a damn thing that <laughs> about him and what whatever was going on, like what I was reading and stuff. And I definitely didn't know, you know, details about his life. And I didn't for a very long time. I just knew he was the president, the abolished slavery, you know, the basic stuff. But I've picked up on what he's felt, what he's gone through. I, I felt when he got shot and and cuz he didn't die instantly he laid in bed there's a significance with the bed i think the bed or the pillow is still on display in a in a museum or something i think it is anyways he died in bed and his it was very painful like the eye the, the nose yeah you rub his nose on the monument for good luck but the pain because it the bullet, the way that it came through it, like hit something in the sinus cavity and it actually blood pooled in one eye and it made, it was painful and it was blurry, you couldn't see. He wasn't really talking while he was laying there, but that's what I was feeling. And then through autopsy and all that stuff, that's what, that's what I was feeling was what that doctor was describing, like what he would have went through because this is where the bullet entered and it did, it never exited. It didn't blow out his face. It was like caught in here which is probably where that freaking pain comes from. And I get a blurry eye every now and again because that's what had happened to him. And then it kind of, you know, his head filled up with blood and the pressure. And, you know, that's just kind of how it happened. But um, I just heard he had to die. A lot of great people, um, they usually die after they succeed. <laughs> You know what I mean? I don't know why that is, but if you go throughout history, that might be where history is coming in because that popped up this morning too. Um, don't forget history for one. Don't undo what, what's already been done, the accomplishments of the, the great people before us. You know what I mean? Because we want to continue to have that positive change. Don't forget history because it will repeat itself. Um... I just want to say that because there's something significant with a friggin' statue, a monument. That's what I was just talking about. But there's another monument. I don't know. It has a horse. It's a dude riding a horse. And it looks like the horse is kind of going, I don't know. Um, I don't know what that is. It's a soldier on it, though. Like, he's in a uni. The dude's wearing a uniform. <sighs> Could have something to do with the letter U as well. I'm going to say this wrong because I don't know if there's a statue for this dude or not. You, you, we'll just say Grant. Because <laughs> I can never say Ulysses. <gasps> I said it. I think I said it right. Anyways, that dude. Something about him too. <laughs> Man, I gotta freshen up on history. I'm just saying. I know a lot about history, but... I know, I know what I need to know, basically. And some of it I know before, before I even learn it. But anyways, someone could be a history buff, but I don't know, there's some significance with that, whatever that means to you. Oh, crap. Page of pots, page of cups, there's an apology in here. Maybe, oh, crap, there's an apology, I don't know. <coughs> anyway. <coughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to. I feel like there was something that I was going to do, but I don't want to do it anymore. Because I was just going to be like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I don't. And it's not that I don't want to read, because I do. And I've said that before in other readings. But I'm getting all congested and stuffed up. Someone has allergies, issues with allergies. But there's, I don't want to do something anymore. Like, because... I don't know, I feel like I'm on the wrong path. Not me, but there's someone in this situation that's like, yeah, I was looking at shit all fucking wrong, is what it feels like. Someone just was 
not on the up and up apparently. And they might want to start fresh. I'm sorry I took a shot at you. It doesn't feel like a bullet. Unless we're talking about Lincoln. But, um, no. <laughs> it, this feels like saying something about someone. Someone wants to apologize. I'm sorry that I took a shot at you. That, that I said this or whatever. Yeah, because someone's pretty burdened. It's like... I don't know. I feel like I'm holding on too tight. Because there's the ace of poles, which... There's the one one that this person's hanging on to. I dropped everything else. Oh, there's a page of cups again. Because he looks exhausted. I feel like everything's going fine. I can handle this. And then everything, like all the sticks just fall to shit. Like, oh crap, I thought I had a hold on this. I thought I had a hold on the situation, on whatever, myself, my emotions, but I guess not, because, fuck, I just dropped everything. I just dropped everything. So you might mean a lot to someone, and they didn't even realize how important this connection situation is to them. It's like, I can't believe I just let go of all of that. I let it all go. I let it all go. Okay, yeah, someone's in their feels because they let something go. They could have let a connection go. There's more than one person. Who feels this way for different reasons because I feel like there's romantic love in here but there's also like friends, family, something. Um, I let it all go. And now you're moving away from whoever this is or whoever these people are. And you're doing fine either way. Hmm. I don't know. You're protected spiritually and otherwise because I feel like the walls or the barriers that some of you have built, they're not, it's not like because of wounds and crap. It's, it's, it's for protection purposes. It's like, I'm not going to let you bust down my walls. Um, not just anyone can get through these gates. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you need to have the fucking key or you need to know the passcode. And the passcode isn't just a word or numbers. It's, it's got a bunch of fucking weird shit in there. And it's like, can you do the little dance? Can you make a little love? <laughs> Want to get down tonight? No. <laughs> Anyways. Um, <laughs> there's like, I don't know. It's a, it's a very secret, secret password. And there is somebody who knows it, even if they don't know that they know it. They have an in. Somebody had an in. Maybe because they knew the passcode and didn't know that they knew the passcode. And then um, now they're going, crap, you changed the password. Because, you know, Google makes you do that every now and again. Oh, you changed the password. Someone can't get in anymore. Some of you could have changed your password to it. Yeah, somebody betrayed you. But they're not doing it anymore. They can't. You changed your password. Huh. Something to do with pace. That could be as an ambulance service. But pace, like pace yourself. Paces. Now that that's making me think of a duel for some reason. You know, like... 20 paces or 12, 10 paces, and then you turn and fire. Um, somebody just, I almost feel like somebody wanted, they were playing dirty. They wanted, I don't know. I want to win, but they were, they were doing it the wrong way. Whatever that means, like someone wanted to have the upper hand in some sort of way. And they, they did you dirty, basically, instead of doing it the gentlemanly way or whatever. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like where you both walk your 10 paces and or whatever it is. And then you both turn and fire. It's like when um, you're still walking and someone quickly turns and shoots you in the back. You know what I mean? Like, okay. Um, so we think that this is how it's going to go. But there's someone who, who betrayed you. It could be a friend or 
a younger energy. Like you were never going to win in the first place because someone was betraying you is what that is. And they might want to apologize for it. Like you were never going to come out on top because there was a plan. But this plan's falling to shit. Everything fell to shit on someone. Hmm. It was funny too. Because I kept saying rock, paper, scissors. Someone drew the short straw, which is why they needed, they were the ones that had to do something. I said that in another reading. Like, oh crap, I don't want to do this, but I have to now. You know what I mean? Um, so, so there's something that someone has to do, but they don't want to do it. And it's what's funny is one show I was watching. I've never seen it before. They were <laughs> they were playing rock paper scissors in the show, and it was like it was reminded me of the show Friends because um, Joey would be like would be like rock paper scissors go, and he did fire, and Phoebe's like water balloon and she won well in this show it was <laughs> they were doing rock paper scissors and one of the guys goes hmm, like with a gun <laughs> and they're looking at him like what the fuck is that like it's rock paper scissors and then the other dude's like because <laughs> he was in the military or something goes all right rock paper scissors and he's got like a fucking ak oh my god i said that in another reading there's a significance with that. He's like, this is how I would do it. He's like, here, have one of these too. And he throws a grenade. <laughs> okay, why the hell am I going off on that show? But um, I just thought it was funny. But the irony, I guess, with it all is <sighs> something unexpected is the point here. Because you think you're only dealing with this, this, and this. But somebody has other plans, which is where the betrayal is coming in. Yeah, somebody had a different plan all along, and it was to screw someone over. Potentially an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And someone's finding out about that. And I do feel like that could be where some of this healing energy is coming in. Like, like um, I can't believe so-and-so did that to me. You know, why, why you of all people? Why did you want to hurt me? You know what I mean? Not me, but somebody else, whoever. That's what someone's thinking. Like, what did I ever fucking do to you? Like, you know? Um, cause that's kind of what it feels like, but this is way longer than I wanted it to be. Um, telling you time is just going zoom, zoom, zoom. So things are picking up speed is what it feels like. And, um, yeah. I feel bad. I don't know. Someone feels bad for something. I feel bad for screwing this up. So someone feels bad for screwing something up. Or screwing something up for you. Money path. A path with money is waiting for you to find it. I would. I started this reading off talking about those rare pennies. Who's your rare penny? Because it might not be the literal penny. Someone might have been minted in 1984. 85. 87's in there too. Someone could have been minted in 1984. But anyways. Um, yeah. One. The number one. Waiting for the one. You're waiting for the one. So if anyone was like trying to lead you astray or, you know, just talking shit, saying that you would sleep with anyone, that you talk to everyone, you flirt with everyone, whatever it is, you've been single this whole time throughout whatever the situation is. And I feel like you're just waiting for the one. It's like only certain people are worth your time and you might talk and joke with with different people, but that doesn't amount to shit, does it? No, it doesn't. Give you a pat on the back. Hey, buddy. It's them. It's them. It's them. Teapot. Deep friendship with someone of the same sex. It's them. So it could be someone who's the same sex as you, like competition type crap whether you're related or not yeah 
someone just a lot of upset and miscommunications mis I can't talk what the hell <laughs> like that's how I feel right now like I just want to start saying stuff but I can't so some of might feel that way like I, I want to talk but I can't say this right now yes I can't but yes you can Something's mystifying. I don't know. I feel like, wow. Hmm. Something about stir fry, too. I don't know. Maybe someone's going to make a stir fry. Do you want chicken stir fry or something? That sounds pretty good, actually. Hmm. I'm not really hungry right now. Not enough, but it came up reversed. So I feel like someone might not have felt good enough before they were letting their pride and ego and fear and jealousy get in the way. And I feel like that's no longer a problem in this situation anymore. Yeah, because the truth is out about it. Someone's going to speak up or someone's figuring something out. And it's like, okay, I just, I, I feel like what the energy, like I cannot believe you said this, you did this. I can't believe you did this. Why? Is it an idea? Is it a seed? Is it a quarter? Is it a penny? What is it? <laughs> I can't believe you did this. Because someone's holding something. But anyways, that's what I have for you. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you soon.